Hi guys, welcome to the Bookish Sister podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on uh, most social media sites as Bookish Stitcher. I hope you guys all had a wonderful New Year's. We had an amazing one. Um, well, I have a story to tell, but I we did the Harry Potter marathon. Like I said, I was going to do with my son. Um, woke up, my husband and my daughter had some daddy-daughter time, and my son and I started to do the Harry Potter marathon. It was kind of funny because at first he said, Mommy, I think I'm too old for this, but I'll watch it one last time because I love you. And so I said, okay. And we started watching and he got really excited. So in the morning we watched the first one and I cast on something. Like I said, I was going to and I'll show you guys that later. In the FOs and then right before, we all had lunch together as a family and then right before her nap and into her nap, we watched the second one. I started something new for that. And then towards the end of her nap, right around when she woke up, we started the third one. And we only got about five minutes into it before she started not feeling well. I'll just say that <laughs> to not go into details. And normally she's fine with daddy and she'll play. But when she's not feeling well, and it's my uh, almost, well, she'll be three in March, daughter. Um, she only wants mommy when she's not feeling well. So my son was a little bit bummed. And we're going to have to make up because he... Uh, he gets to watch through all the Harry Potters that are PG, so the third one is the last one he could have watched because he's only eight. But um, So we'll have to finish watching that one some other time, but went and cuddled my daughter, and that was kind of how I spent the rest of my New Year's uh, day. So that was really good, and just you know getting to spend some cuddle time because they're only little for so long, so I will always take the cuddles, even though I hated her being sick. Let me get a sip of my coffee. I got a new mug. You can see it. A great book. And it says, should leave you with many experiences and slightly exhausted. I'm actually having um, Starbucks in this cup because we were at the bookstore earlier today um, getting our new calendar for the year and just some other odds and ends. And I got Starbucks at the bookstore. But I don't know if any of <laughs> you other guys have this, but apparently my name boggles the mind because it's, the, the the way it can get misspelled is insane. They were, uh, the guy that took my drink order was not the guy that passed it out to me. And he was like, Jennifer, no, wait, what does it say? Jen Net. And he had spelled it phonetically and completely misspelled it. So I was like, yeah, Jennifer, whatever. I need to uh, come up with a name that I use only at Starbucks. It's really like simple, like Jen or something like that so that it, it you know, won't get messed up. But anyway, so that's why it's in this cup. And I'm having a gingerbread latte. And let's see. I wanted to talk about my 2014 goals that I did and my 2015 upcoming new ones because I, I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. And I try to set myself very general goals so that I set myself up for success. So in 2014, some of my goals were to not buy, and this was a harder one, uh, not buy any yarn from... Uh, I think when I found out, I got into the Knitting Retreat SSK, so October of 2013 through 2014 July. And I met that goal except for one or two things that I had to get for a specific project like a baby shower. And then I had a goal of learning to drop spindle, and I did at the Knitting Retreat. I also had a goal of using up 50 skeins of my stash, and I shot past that and got to 72. So that felt great, and especially since I had so many projects this year where I had to buy yarn for, so I know that if I just knit from my stash, I could use up a ton. But what else were my other goals? I know I had a lot more, but that's all I can think of right now. But so I came up with some other goals for 2015, and I wanted to share them with you guys. And I would love to hear your goals, because I always like to get new ideas of things to incorporate into my life. So if you have goals, please share them on the Ravelry group thread for this episode. So my 2015 knitting goals are uh, attend as many festivals slash retreats as possible. So that's going to be a fun one that I'm really excited about, and I have a bunch planned, uh, leading to my second goal of attending as many festivals as possible, knit a Rhinebeck sweater. Okay, I'm really excited about this because my friend Lauren, who I believe is Elbeth21 on Ravelry, contacted me and she said, 
hey, my parents live right near there. Come fly in. She'll pick me up so I won't need to rent a car. I can stay with her parents in a hotel. More yarn money. And so I'm really excited. So I'm going to knit a Rhinebeck sweater. I'm so excited. I know. I, I, yeah, I'm really excited. And she's actually right now in the Galapagos Islands having a vacation. Um, my third goal is unofficially I want to do Spinzilla which is a spinning thing I believe in the fall and you just try to spin as much as you can because I have my wheel now and I also want to do tour de fleece so those are other spinning things that I want to do another goal I have is to knit 75 um, skeins for my stash this year since I got 72 last year I feel I can be very confident that I can get to 75 because I also want to say no to be able to say no to people when they ask knit more for myself this year you know and the last goal I have for 2015 knitting and spinning wise is to be less structured planned in my knitting I'm one of those people that I'm so excited to knit different things and participate in different knit alongs that I will know my knitting for the next three or four months and it's awesome to plan because I love it but sometimes you just want to spur the moment go to your stash and look up something and get it because and just find something to knit you know just right there so my goal is to be a little less structured and this has been a little challenging for me because I keep seeing things on Ravelry or in my stash I'm like hmm I want to knit them like stop stop planning stop planning just wait till you get stuff off the needles and go grab whatever strikes your fancy at that time so reading goals I last year read 50 books and it was down to the wire on that but this year I want to read 55 kind of stretch myself to grow um, as far as languages, I want to just keep studying Spanish, French, Russian, and add in more Japanese. And I'm hoping to try to find online resources where I can chat with people who speak these languages because while me practicing on my own, it's not going to get, I'm not going to become as fluent. I'm conversational, but I'm not going to become as fluent as I would love to be unless I'm talking with a native speaker. And I also have a section called Bring It Back that I, one I want to do. Um, I want to bring back more of my running. I haven't been running, and I need to. So I am doing a run 100 miles. I'm starting off with walk jogging. <laughs> uh, 100 miles by Valentine's Day. And so that's basically a little over two miles a day. And then I want to start bring back my sewing. I need to get my machine fixed. And I would like to do five projects this year on that. Just little things like a pair of pajama pants would count. And then I want to learn something new. I try to do that every year. And this year my new thing is going to be cross stitch. And my goal is to do five projects with that. Like three small little ones. I actually want to do some little ones to hang up back there. I found this one that's a heart and it's done with knit stitches and it has knitting needles. And so I thought that would be really cute. And then uh, two bigger ones. So those are all my 2015 goals. And I wanted to say thank you to Ironical Knitter Jennifer. She sent me a package this week. It was really sweet. And um, she sent me this cloth for blocking out shawls and I guess anything you need to block. But she asked me if I had one and I said no because I have been using a bathroom towel <laughs> and just kind of putting pins in my I'm not. I didn't have anything nice. So uh, thank you so much, Jennifer. And she also sent a skein of yarn along with that because she said every package should come with yarn. And my daughter, as soon as she saw that, was hugging it and carrying it around so I'll have to steal that back from her at some point but um that's all the 2015 stuff that I wanted to talk about now for my finished objects my first one is a little hat that I started for my son during the first Harry Potter this is the barley hat I love this for hand spun and this was hand spun that was gifted to me during a swap at the knitting in the mitten retreat by Jen Oss, and then her, the last part of her Ravelry name is a number, I can't remember, but Barley Hat, Hand Spun, um, and it's by Tin Can Knits. My son loves it. This is only his second hat, second or third hat I've ever knit for him, and my husband was commenting on how awesome it looks because she did a great job with the hand spun. It almost looks like snow falling on a winter night. Isn't that so pretty? So I really like that, and my son does too. That was a quick knit. I, I love quick knits. I finished, I think, over half of it during the uh, Harry Potter marathon. So, Second thing. Bonnie Lee, oh my gosh. 
you guys. Bonnie, I shouldn't call her we, Bonnie Huge Mouth from my daughter. I finished it up right after I podcasted last time. Look at those ears. Susan Claudino is amazing. This is her pattern. And also Sarah of Another Crafty Girl is amazing. This is her yarn. It's just so cute. Look at those little eyeballs and the hands. And I adapted this pattern a ton because the original pattern calls for it to be a wee mouse. Very, very tiny. I think it was supposed to use 70 yards. Well, I had over 200, 220, I believe, comes in a worsted skein from Another Crafty Girl. And this is the Swedish Chef colorway. But I wanted to use up as much of this amazing yarn as possible and to have something for my daughter to squeeze and squeeze. So I haven't knitted a scarf yet. There's a scarf in the picture, and I probably will do that. But she loves it. She loves it, loves it, loves it. So I just, her patterns are so, whoa, her patterns are so cute. I think I'm going to knit another one of her patterns for my daughter for her birthday. So those are my two completely finished objects. I also have a half finished object or hoe, but this is for, I believe, I forgot to look it up, uh, Crystal Bailey, I believe. Um, and these are socks out of, the first one's done, I'll show you. And then I have the second one on the needles. And this is mustache yarn in the Candy Crush colorway. And these are for, I believe it's Crystal Bailey on Instagram. And it's cool, I was listening uh, when I was going somewhere to the post office, I mailed off the uh, prize giveaways um, to a TED talk. And they were talking about, can money buy you happiness? And they said, Yes, but not in the way you typically think, because they gave a whole bunch of different people at this thing $20, and half of them, they said, you have to spend it on yourself, coffee, makeup, book, whatever you want to spend it on, and the other people, they gave $20 and said, you have to spend it on someone else, and they took a rating when they gave the people the money, how happy are you right now, 1 to 10, and then the people went off, and the people that it was for themselves just kind of stuck it in their wallet and then used it on whatever their next purchase was. You know, they just used that instead of the money they had in their thing. But then the people that were given the $20 to give to others, some of them went and bought, like, their niece a gift. Some of them went and gave the money to street performers, to homeless. And at the end of the day, they re-asked the people how happy you were. And the people that had used it on themselves were same happiness. And then the people had used it on others were one to two points higher on the happiness scale. And why am I telling you this TED Talk? Because this is for the get your yarn wish granted thing on Instagram. So these socks are not for me. They are for Crystal. And these socks have brought me so much joy, Crystal. Knitting these for you has been just so great. And when I show them on Instagram and she comments and is so excited, I get excited. And it's just, it's such a joyful thing. And I'm so excited to get these to her. So this one is ready for the heel almost, which I'll be doing later tonight. And you probably will not see the finished socks because I am thinking that these will be done and sent in the mail by next Saturday. So, I mean, you can imagine what it looks like since this is the first one. There's just going to be two of these. And she said to do the cuff however long because she didn't has never had handed socks before. So I just kind of did it to where the, the theory where you fold it in half and it kind of equals itself. So those are for Crystal. And then I have resurrected something you guys have not seen in forever because I put it aside to do Christmas knitting and months, well, monsters for Christmas and all that stuff. So this is my color affection shawl. Oh, and the bag that the socks were in was my girl cave bag, which I've, you guys have seen before. Um, I resurrected my color affection shawl, which is very discombobulated. Okay. So this is my color affection shawl by Vera Valamaki. The three yarns that I'm using on this are dark purple is wandering wool. There is a gray, which is two if by hand. And then there is a sparkle purple and gray by another crafty girl. And as you can see, that's where I started. And I have done from here to all, and it's bunched up because it's huge and it's taking forever to go across to there. 
So I'm still working on this. I'm going to try to do a row a day. So you guys haven't seen this in forever and you probably won't see it again for a little while, but I just thought I'd show you because I have made a ton of progress on that and that's kind of what I've worked on a lot this week. So the final thing I have to show you for my works in progress is my v-neck simple raglan summer tweed. I, this is like the longest pattern name. I always forget it, but I believe it's also, it's by Heidi Kiermeyer, I believe. Yes. And this is out of uh, Barocco Remix yarn. And I finished the body and I've started just barely the sleeve. But the sleeves, this is on size seven, so hopefully it'll go pretty fast and I'll get it done and can zoom along to my next thing because I, I did during the second Harry Potter start the olive sweater um, with some of my 2015 oldest skeins uh, project that we're doing in the group right now, which is going really well. And I, it's on size one and a half needles right now, fingering weight one and a half over 200 stitches. So in the time span of the one second Harry Potter movie, I think I got three or four rows done. So I didn't even bring that down. I'm going to I did the cast on, but now I'm going to pause, finish that one off, hopefully this week, probably not, and then go on to some other sweaters. But I am starting to use up my 2015 oldest skeins, 15 oldest skeins of yarn. I hope you guys are too. Um, Kiki Lucy was kind enough to put up a thread in the Ravelry group for your finished objects for that. And the whole thing with that is that you can have to use up your 15 oldest. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm not going to, I don't have time to go through anybody's stash and check, but I just, I love some of my older yarns and I was thinking I need to use these or gift them. You know, you, you, you don't just want to send them sitting there forever. So that's the whole theory behind it. So you can have up to 15 posts in that thread showing your 15 oldest gains. So go ahead and go, um, enter your things in there and every month at the end I will be drawing for a person to win a pattern of their choice uh, seven dollars or less and if you're not and you have to be a Ravelry group member of course for that so you can go over and join the Bookish Stitcher podcast if you're not a member so that is all of my works in progress now on to spinning because my lazy Kate just showed up on Saturday, but I got impatient. I couldn't wait anymore. The guests had left the house so I could go kind of lock myself. Uh, and sometimes my husband will come join me <laughs> in my room during my daughter's nap time and spin and because I'm off work right now because it's I get I get a while off. And then even though I work from home, so it, even if I were at work, I could still get some spinning done. But anyways. <laughs> So, and I would spin at night. My husband, I told, I told him that you guys were encouraging him for his knitting because a lot of people posted on the Ravelry group, but he's been playing Zelda, so he hasn't been knitting. But so while he's been playing Zelda, I have been spinning and I actually have a finished braid of fiber to show you guys. I washed it yesterday. This was the one that I, I think I showed you guys, oops. See if I can find a good spot. This is Nitty in color in her flip flops colorway, and this is destined to become a barley hat for me. And I was spinning, hoping to get a two ply worsted, and I think I did it. Isn't that awesome? The colors are really subtle but really pretty, and I love the bright pops of green and blue and purple in there because most of it's darker, and then there are these just bright pops. So that will get started for a hat for me as soon as some other stuff gets off the needles because I don't like to have a lot on the needles at once. I didn't make my 2014 um, have zero project on the needles goal. I had four projects uh, left on the needles at the end of 2014. And those are some of the ones I just showed you, the socks, the color affection, and the sweater. And I have one more pair of socks. But those should all be done pretty soon except for the color affection, which... It's just going to keep on going and going. I may save that for um, the summertime to finish it off to count for a knitting challenge that goes on during the summer. 
So I started a new braid. And this actually is Cloud Lover, the Sugar Plum colorway. Started, I've spun up most of it because it starts out as a big braid, but I've spun most of it, or at least half. Isn't that pretty? It is white with hints of brown, purple, and pink. And that whole braid is going to be spun singly, just spun by itself, for those of you that aren't spinners. And then it is going to be plied, which is where you take the one single with another single, and the other, and plied together, so it's a two-ply yarn. The other single is going to be this Cloud Lover, and this is the colorway Petrified. It's organic Colworth and mulberry silk. I have a good deal of Cloud Lover because I had, I got a coupon in the SSK Knitting Retreat goodie bag for her, so I got some of her on sale fibers and stuff like that. So I think those two plied together will be really pretty because this is browns mostly with pops of white, purple, a tiny bit of pink, but I just think those will be so pretty. And a nice contrast. And what am I gonna do with that hand spun? Because I love to knit with the hand spun right away. I am going to make a Susan B. Anderson weigh it shawl that uh, normally uses Miss Babs, but I'm gonna use my hand spun because I, I just, I love spinning you guys. I love it so, so much. And I think Tuesday coming up is supposed to be like the day for spinners. I forget what it's called, Saint somebody. But I am going to try to not knit on Tuesday and just spin in the evening. So there's everything with my spinning. I don't have any enabling for you guys this week, any yarny goodness enabling. Shocker. But I have a festival coming up next weekend, so I didn't buy anything because I want to save my money for the festival. And I do have one order coming in that I did a special order for some stuff I wanted with January Yarns. Oh, speaking of January Yarns, Sarah of January Yarns has just released a hat pattern, and it's gorgeous, and she did an amazing job. And it's her first ever pattern release, and I will be linking it in the show notes, and you should definitely go check it out. I think it's called Back in December, and it's a it's just really pretty cabled hat. And so you should definitely go check that out. And if you want to and you like it, support her in her first design that she's doing. So no enabling. But I have something that isn't yarn related that is cool. So I am not, I guess, a typical what you think of as standard girl in the way that I don't have a ton of purses or that kind of thing. I typically have one purse and I use it till it has holes in it and is falling apart. And it's not because I can't afford a new purse or I can't afford to have a lot of purses. It's just that's not where I choose to put my money. You know what I mean? And the same way with shoes, I will wear my shoes till they have holes in them. And I'm also a bit of, I always worry about like putting stuff in landfills. Hippie, yes, I know. So my other purse got a hole in it and that's not something you want to have for your purse to have, you know, there's stuff in there you don't want falling out. And it was a pretty sizable hole. So I went to Etsy and ordered a new purse because I like the cross ma uh, messenger bags because they're just really easy to carry around. And so I found, after cruising for a very long time, JH Fabric Creations. And this is my new purse. Isn't this cute? It's a lot brighter than it's showing up. I don't know. But it's a very, very bright turquoise blue and it has fiber all over it already <laughs> with birds. And it has an adjustable strap, which I love because I like to, like I said, wear it cross body. It's extremely well made. You open it up. There are two pockets right there. There's, I think right now I have lip balm and hand lotion and it has a snap closure. And then they included free for me, I don't know if this is normal, but I didn't buy this, uh, a sunglass case. I, I think I have a pair of sunglasses, I have to try to find them. But, and then inside, it just has two more pockets and then a 
giant big compartment. But I love this and they have a lot of fabric different options so that you can choose if you ever wanted to look for a good cross messenger bag because I have trouble I think standardly stand, standard purses I see a lot of times are where you hold them like handbag style or clutches or whatever you call it and running after a toddler I I want to be able to you know grab her at any moment that I need to like pick her up or something like that and not have to worry about my purse and her getting into it. So if it's right there on my hip, it's easier for me. So I, I just love the cross messenger bags and I have trouble finding them. So if you're like me at all, um, you could head on over to JH Fabric Creations and peruse their different stuff that they have. Oh, that's my new bag. And I wanted to show that to you guys because I didn't have any yarn enabling, but that came and that was cool. So, we have in the group right now our 200 member prize giveaway. And I'm going to go there right now and I'm going to lock the thread. And I believe that we have numbers 2, open random number generator, 200 member prize giveaways, the thread locked. 2 through 61. Generate number 52. Yay, it picked a higher number. It's been picking low numbers. And I was wondering if I was going to have to go and buy a random number generator because I have the free one. And my husband was like, well, if it's picking lower numbers consistently, then it is not um, random anymore and you need to pick a new one. So, number 52. Number 52 is Coggy's M-I-L, mother-in-law, I guess. Uh, congrats. She said, congrats, 200. They're all so cute. Um, the owls or the singular owl, but the H-F-D ones are calling my name, too. So congrats, Coggy's mother-in-law. You won. And I will be contacting, actually, when you see this, contact me. And I will make for sure what one you want out of those three. And then we will get that sent in the mail to you. So that is the giveaway. We have a new giveaway because somebody is really awesome, as suggested in their name. Awesome. Can you know who it is? Awesome Granny. She contacted me on Ravelry. I wanted to send a bag and I was like, oh, well, can I pay you for it? Because I know that, you know, you have to, you know, make it and stuff like that. So we figured something out and she sent this for you guys or for me, to me, to you guys, to give to you guys. <laughs> okay, so she let me pick any one and I figured since this is a bookish stitcher podcast, we needed the books one, right? And this is huge. It's definitely... Bigger than my purse. Yes, very much bigger. So it would definitely hold a sweater. I've got to get one of these for myself. The inside is very, very pretty. You see it? And it also comes with a matching notions pouch. And I love little details on bags. And this has this little thing on it and it's a little ring and it says dream, hope, trust, love and different ones like that. You see that? It's really, really cute. So this is the new giveaway for the podcast. This will be open, the giveaway, for two weeks. I'm going to open up a thread on the group. Let's just have you go to her Etsy store and say which is your favorite bag. I have several. I love the book one, of course. I love the hot air balloon one. Um, there's one with, I think, apartment windows or something like that that I like, or houses. But I really like the hot air balloon one. There was also a camping one that was really, really cute. So she has a ton of really good ones right now. So on to the book review for this week. Oh, I'm going long. Okay. So I had... The goal of reading 50 books this year and I was kind of in a crunch because it was coming down towards the end and I had not read 50 and I needed something fast. So I went to my wonderful walls of books that I have and picked out something 
and this is what I got. Now I actually had owned the second one in this series before. I bought the second one because I thought the cover was cute. Yes, I do sometimes judge a book by its cover. It happens. And I started reading it and I got a ways into it and realized there's a first one. I don't know if somebody told me or something. So I stopped reading that one immediately, went and got this one, and so I started reading it and finished it December 31st in the afternoon, and it was really weird to not have any books. And I didn't want to start a new one because it was still the same day, so I would be walking around, what am I reading? Nothing until tomorrow. So uh, January 1st, I started reading a whole bunch of four new books. So this is the one I read. It's called The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. And the whole premise is that the world needs saving. And there are, and it can only be done by children. And there's this mastermind guy who's trying to find a group of children to help him save the world. And it's never worked out before, but he finally, this time, finds children, a group. And they must infiltrate this school and uh, stop this horrible guy from, this other horrible guy from ruining the world. And it's very cute. The children are each unique and have their own different um, characteristics and specialities that they bring to the team. I think my favorite is probably Kate. She's the girl that she has this bucket and it has like, everything in it and she's just so resourceful. And I, I, I love that. She's just, it's a really good example of a girl just being able to save the day and just the resourcefulness is amazing. I love how she's very good at that. So I'll just read the back to you guys really quick. Are you a gifted child looking for special opportunities? When this particular ad, peculiar ad, appears in the newspaper, dozens of children enroll to take a series of mysterious mind-bending tests. And you, dear reader, can test your wits right alongside them. I didn't do that. I didn't try to, like, solve the tests as I did them. But, but in the end, just four special children will succeed. Their challenge to go on to a, a secret mission that, will on, that only the most intelligent and resourceful children could complete. With their newfound friendship at stake, will they be able to pass the most important test of all? And it's neat because of the boss. One thing it deals with in the book is Morse code and how the children communicate. And at the bottom right here, there's Morse code. And I didn't even think about that, but my husband is now reading it because he was really interested in it. And he was like, oh, there's Morse code on the back. Did you solve that? Do you know Morse code? No. So he uh, went and looked up online and solved the Morse code on the back of the book. So I thought that was pretty cute. but. That's all I have this week for you guys. It's a couple minutes longer than normal. I normally try to keep it at 30 minutes because the thing that hosts my podcast for iTunes, because there's a ton of people that watch on iTunes. I'm really glad. Hi, all iTunes people. Um, uh, in order to fit all my videos on there and not have to pay a ton of money, because I, you know, I can't, um, I have to keep it at a certain amount. So hopefully this will all work. In March, I'm going to have to have shorter episodes because it's a five-Sunday month. But you guys didn't need to know that. But anyways, I hope you guys have an awesome week and that you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye guys.